What is something that was normal in medieval times, but would be weird today? This was a love potion recipe from the 10th century. A woman will lay a cloth on the ground and cover it in grain. She will then strip her clothing off and cover her body in honey. After that, she will roll around on the cloth and try to get covered in grain. Afterwards, she will get up and take the grain stuck to her body over to the mill and ground that into flour. She will then use that flour to bake bread and give it to her husband to eat. There was also another love potion that involves a wife presenting her naked butt to her husband who then rolls bread dough on it that will be turned into bread. Edit, did not expect this to blow up. I read this in an excerpt of Burchard of Worms book The Corrector, or alternatively The Physician. He was a bishop in southern Germany who wrote books on canon law. Book 19, this one, covered a lot of popular pagan rituals. In modern times, love potions still exist in the form of cam generals selling their bath water to gamers. Donating your urine to a dyer. I believe that this is where the phrase doesn't have a part of pee in originated. If you were poor, you sold your urine. If you were really poor, you did not have a part of pee into and thus could not sell your urine. Eater, okay just got home from work and this blew up way bigger than I thought it ever would, so I need to edit this to add that I did learn that this is not the proper etymology of the phrase. The phrase was not actually used until it was written by Juna Barnes in her novel Nightwood first published in 1936. It does reference the medieval practice of selling urine and throwing waste out the window, but the actual phrase was not actually coined in medieval times. Wearing a codpiece. Ah, when syphilis inspired fashion. Duels over a bride at a wedding. Edit, thank you for the award. That led to my favorite trivia of weddings, where the best man was not necessarily your best mate, but the best duelist you knew, in order to help fight over the bride at a wedding. A barber doing surgery. It was more like a surgeon was also doing haircuts. The hue and cry. Literally shouting that someone stole something and having the whole village chase after them. I mean. Have any better ideas for when you get robbed in a public place? Sounds like a sound idea to me. Having rules about what colors and what type of clothing and hats you could wear, based on your occupation or social level. Some cherry laws covered a whole host of things, beyond clothing. It'd also limit, for example, the number of guests you could've at a wedding. Animal courts. By far the most serial offenders were pigs, accused and convicted of chewing off body parts and even eating children. Most were found guilty and sentenced to death by hanging or being burned at the stake. In 1386, a convicted pig was dressed in a waistcoat, gloves, drawers and a human mask for its execution. In 1386, a convicted pig was dressed in a waistcoat, gloves, drawers and a human mask for its execution. That is some peak fricked up 14th century s right there. That's the kind of s that made Barbara Tuckman pour a tall drink and oil her typewriter. Outlawry, which stripped a person of all legal rights and allowed anyone to kill them with impunity. Civil death is the modern version of this and it's still practiced in Rhode Island. I guess I'll add that civil death in Rhode Island includes the loss of ability to possess or bequeath property, get married, or even to bring a claim in court. Civilly dead attacked or molested in prison have no capacity to sue, because they are dead. It is not clear whether a defendant could legally be convicted for murder of a person already legally dead, and there's no case law to that effect so it would have to be decided by the court. The R.I. Supreme Court has upheld the statute's bar on bringing claims in court several times in recent years, despite R.I.'s constitution featuring a provision absent from the U.S. Constitution, which protects the right to bring claims in court. Seeing someone in stocks on a stage in public. Now you have to pay to see that. Heartwarming the royal ass wiper. Seriously. Someone would wipe the king's ass. And it was a respected position. The groom of the stool. And it wasn't just a respected position, it was a very powerful one. 
going to sleep as soon as it gets dark, waking up and hanging out with your family for a few hours in the middle of the night, and going back to bed until sunrise. I would like to know more. Throwing your ass out of the window. Nowadays we keep it securely locked inside. In Rome, once a year Jews were made to run through the streets naked. HTTPS colon slash slash www. Google. Comampus www. Haaretz. Comamp Jewish. Premium Pope stops Rome's sadistic Jews race 1. 5,365,882. Did they hire Borat to spectate the running of the Jew? Fight instead of divorce why waste time on courts and child support? In medieval Germany, if a husband and wife reached a dead end on some important issue, they entered the ring. The rules, of course, equalized the forces of men and women. In the ring, the man was in a hole, one hand was tied behind his back, so that he could strike with only one hand. And the wife was given a bag of coal, with which he struck. Whoever wins the fight, inflicts serious injury or the defeated one asks for mercy, is, therefore, right in the dispute. Hum. Conan in 1228, a woman fought a man at Bern, Switzerland, and soundly defeated him. German law provided that in such a case the man should be armed with three wooden clubs. He was to put B, sick, up to his waist in a three food wide hole dug in the ground, with one hand tied behind his back. The woman was to be armed with three rocks, each weighing between one and five pounds, and each one wrapped in cloth. The man could not leave his hole but the woman was free to run around the edge of the pit. If the man touched the edge of the pit with either his hand or arm, he had to surrender one of his clubs to the judges. If the woman hit him with a rock while he was doing so, she forfeited one of her stones. Bizarre as it may seem to us today, this marital duel was very far from play acting. For both parties, the penalty for defeat was death. If the woman won, the man was executed, if the man won, the woman was buried alive. Sleeping with your entire family in one bed. Or if you are a king, sleeping in the same bed with a rival king to cement your friendship and respect for each other, as brothers. Privacy was just not really a thing in the middle ages. Edit, I came at this with a pretty western perspective obviously. Many families around the world still sleep together in the same bed space. However in modern western culture, it isn't considered as normal as it would have been in previous centuries. Actually it wasn't a thing for the majority of history. Only relatively recently, the last 150 years or so with separate bedrooms. You have insulted my honor, I challenge you to a duel. I accept. Swords or cards? Not European, but foot binding is weird as frick. Like, let's make this kid wear tiny shoes so her feet stay like kids feet her whole life so men find her more attractive. It was also a socio-economic status symbol. It showed that her family was wealthy enough that they could afford to feed house clothe her without her help as a laboring member of the family. In medieval times it was a common practice to display tapestries on walls instead of oil paintings and other works of art. My parents had tapestries hanging in our house growing up. To add to the medievalness, in order to get the mounts to hang them, my dad went to the renaissance fair, spoke to a blacksmith about making the mounts, then a year or two later when they came back through was able to actually get them. Leprosy. There are pieces falling off of me. I'm not half the man I used to be. Oh why did I get leprosy? Brushing your teeth with a stick. A toothbrush is just a stick with bristles at one end. Public executions. The last public execution in the US happened in 1936, in France in 1939. Inheriting clothes being a big deal. Things weren't really disposable back then, people wore, turned, refreshed, 
Resewed, cut down and resewed, stripped into trimming and then into rags every piece of clothing they owned. There was a thriving second hand market, and a lot of money in carefully reusing good bits of cloth, cutting off worn out buttonholes and re sewing garments, reusing trim, etc. Even the upper class did this to an extent, you had to get to ridiculously wealthy royalty level for clothing to be abundant and completely new all the time. You rarely find whole garments in archaeological digs, but you find all sorts of bits and pieces that were cut off an otherwise whole garment. This was because making cloth was insanely time consuming, especially in the earlier periods when the primary looms were upright and sheep weren't yet fully modernized and produced smaller amounts of wool, of various qualities. Linen was even more time consuming, cotton wasn't a thing yet, and cotton is seriously annoying to process by hand, and silk was out of reach for most people. So, people willed cloth to relatives when they died, as well as specific garments. These days you sell off all grandma's old Walmart clothes, or sometimes get some cool vintage stuff you wear occasionally, but back then getting a few ells of rusted wool cloth was a huge score. There are garments that were passed down several times, because they were just that valuable, and clothes show up in the wills of people from many different classes. It was entirely normal for your daughter to be wearing a dress made from her great grandmother's old over gown that had been willed down through the family in the good cloth ray purposed until it was only fit for rags. There were whole industries devoted to refinishing cloth that had gotten a bit worn so new garments could be sewn from it. Imagine today getting excited because your aunt died and left you four pairs of jeans. But, in the medieval period, that would have been a truly great score of an inheritance. First, I just want to say great comment. I had no idea this was a thing. Second, I'm dyslexic and read cutting off worn out buttonholes as cutting off worn out buttholes at first. So not only was it informative, it made me giggle. I read a book from the 1930s about life in medieval England, one of the thing that really stuck out was the level of animal cruelty, and I don't just mean beasts of burden and whatnot. In one section on the types of games played affairs there was one for example which involved tying a rooster to a peg and then the contestants took turns throwing stones at it, whoever killed it was the winner. Bear baiting, bull baiting and baiting just about any kind of animal, usually ending in it being killed was the height of wholesome fun. Wait till you hear about fox tossing. Never traveling more than a few miles outside of your village or town. Not really true. People could not travel regularly because it was too far, but many professions required people to travel all the time. It was either stay at home or go away for a longer time. Wearing cloaks I don't understand why cloaks are amazing we should bring cloaks back. I have an unproven theory that certain garments like cloaks, great coats, and trench coats have fallen out of popularity simply because they are a pain in the butt while driving a car. In fact, it was normal to pick your nose back then. NGL, I think it's still pretty normal we all just hide it and pretend it's gross. It's only gross when you eat it guys. Pissing and sting in a bowl and just tossing your ass out the window in the morning. We do that on social media instead. More horrifying than weird, but burning cats alive was a popular form of entertainment in medieval and early modern France. The cultural historian Robert Danton writes, cats also figured in the cycle of Saint John the Baptist, which took place on the 24th of June, at the time of summer solstice. Crowds made bonfires, jumped over them, danced around them, and threw into them objects with magical power hoping to avoid disaster and obtain good fortune during the rest of the year. A favorite object was cats, cats tied up in bags, cats suspended from ropes, or cats burned at stake. Parisians like to incinerate cats by the sackful, while the Cura Mords, or Cura Grave Mired or Cat Chasers, of Saint Chamond preferred to chase a flaming cat through the streets. In parts of Burgundy and Lorraine they danced around a kind of burning maypole with a cat tied to it. In the Metz region they burned a dozen cats at a time in a basket on top of a bonfire. The ancient Egyptians seem to be the only people in history that liked cats. 
Damn do they get s on all the time. Feels bad as a cat mom. Carrying a sword. More like not having enough money to be able to afford a sword. A decent sword costs several months wages for the average man. Having multiple children, over many years, while living in a one room dwelling. Eater, I had answered the question assuming Op was talking about the socio-economic and cultural experience that the time period was, and not a time all over the world. My bad. So, specifically, having X in the same room as your kids. Gruesome executions that took a while to actually kill someone. Seriously medieval people WTF is it with sentencing people to be burned at the stake or crucified or drawn and quartered? A swift beheading was the most benevolent way to kill someone in the old days but not widely practiced as it turns out. Beheadings took skill. France solved that. For most of history, for the average person, getting married was as simple as agreeing to be married. The ceremony, witnesses, and engagement were only really important for people who were afraid of being deceived. A wealthy person, with a lot to lose, would typically announce their upcoming wedding to allow time for any issues to be discovered, like a previous marriage, financial ruin, or an affair that could call into question legitimacy of any heirs. Witnesses were useful because a marriage by agreement is truly and he said she said set up until the marriage becomes common knowledge. If party A claimed to be married to party B and party B denied it, they would call on witnesses to confirm or deny each scenario. The more witnesses or the higher their status, the more reliable the testimony would be. So, say a local noble denied that he married a lower class girl, and it's him and his family against her and her family. The girl's family would likely lose. But if a priest married them, his word would be final. Having people sign a church register was a natural extension that occurred more frequently over time. Similarly though, they could go to a local public place and tell people together that they were married and the marriage would become common knowledge, which is hard to deny. Basically all the wedding layers that we enjoy as romance and tradition are just levels of security. Wielding supreme executive power because some water retard threw a sword at you. Strange women laying in ponds distributing swords is a horrible basis for a system of government. I've taken medieval literature in college. There's a lot of strange things that was normal for them but strange for us. Selling off your daughter so the rest of your family can eat, putting iron near your baby to protect them from changelings, etc etc. I've read that the whole changeling thing may have actually been autism. Something about how the child was usually two when they started acting different and I believe that's when autism can be detected. At least with my nephew it was around two. Public baths. Not on the same scale as they were in Rome, but it was still pretty common to have a bathhouse in medieval Germany and surrounding places to bathe in a group in a large tub of hot, fragrant water, called a Zuberbad in German. Now everyone's all hung up nudity. Even among friends, so it's way less common, although you can still enjoy a public Zuba bath at medieval markets and renaissance fairs in Germanic countries. Maybe in the west, yeah. Last I checked, saunas are extremely common in Finland, and public bathing happens all the time in some Asian countries. Women plucking their hairline to make their forehead bigger. In the sea 13th. There was this whole European aesthetic about women's eye, zy foreheads. So women would pluck their hair to make the forehead bigger and zier. Whenever I tell my classes about this they go you but they are all manscaping and waxing other body parts. I wish I lived in that era. My five head would have bhawt. A doctor taste testing urine. The stereotype that girls were the hornier ex. On second thought. God didn't gift women with multiple consecutive orgasms so they couldn't take advantage of it. Let's sleep on some hay on the floor. I visited a museum about early US times. That talked about the beds being made of hay. And apparently the term hit the hay literally means to smack the hay. 
I guess it was to serve two purposes. To flush out any critters, but to also soften up the hay. Pretty cool I think because I always thought it literally meant that you were going to go hit the hay with your body falling down onto it. But it's actually even more literal than that. Assuming that most women you meet can't read. Assuming that most men you meet either can't read or can also read Latin. Not going more than 20 miles from where you were born. Salt being extremely expensive. Getting some comments here, expensive is a relative statement, and when you consider that less than 3 hours of minimum wage buys a 50 pound bag of salt a day. It's safe to say that a modern person would be surprised at how expensive salt was. Additionally, salt in West Africa was expensive even in absolute terms. Comma barbers also being doctors and performing surgery. Marrying second cousins. When nobody travels and villages are small. It's pretty much unavoidable. Huge age disparities between husband and wife, both of whom are getting married for the first time. Paying different taxes based on religion. Salt being extremely expensive. Relatively. Salt was a very important commodity. There was good money to be made from salt because everyone needed it, but that also means it was certainly affordable. Salting was the most common form of preservation for meat, and salting requires a lot of salt. If it had been extremely expensive, that wouldn't have worked. Having people help you get dressed and undressed as an adult. Bloodletting. Cupping. The whole family waking up at midnight to drink and bulls for an hour or two before going back to bed. Sleeping all together on the floor, with people casually having X without problems. We did that in the 60s. Boiling fruit before you eat it. People in medieval times thought raw fruit was bad for you, so they boiled their fruit before eating it. Boiling removes vitamin C from fruit. This habit is thought to be one of the reasons why there were high rates of scurvy in medieval times. One of the symptoms of scurvy is hallucinations. Scurvy induced hallucinations are thought to be one of the reasons why so many people in medieval times were documented to have had religious visions. LPT, if you want to see Jesus, stop ingesting vitamin C. Possible side effects include loss of teeth, bleeding gums, aforementioned hallucinations, suppression of immune system, and death. Scurvy was non-existent in medieval times and only became a common thing when long ocean trips to the new world became commonplace. Cabbage was a staple of the medieval diet and that's loaded with vitamin C, whereas fruit was certainly not an everyday part of the diet. About the only place scurvy was relevant back then, was for the crusader armies, who were basically malnourished for years. This comment is clear evidence that Reddit is a shell for anything except banal anecdotes. The name Lance isn't popular in this day and age, but back in medieval times people were called Lance a lot. Sigh, take your upvote colon p. Public executions. A trebuchet being the best siege weapon. What we consider swear words were in everyday usage. For example, there was a road called Grope Cunt Lane in medieval London on the other hand, blasphemy was a real show stopper. Zance, short for God's wounds, would have polite ladies fainting and make gentlemen drop their hats. Eat foods without processed sugar. I saw in a documentary that their teeth were in exceptionally good shape because of this. They looked night and day compared to the skeleton teeth of societies that had sugar. A sword fight in a public park. I was gonna say the plague but. Sleeping twice. In medieval times life effectively revolved around the sun. But particularly in the winter, there was far too much time in the night to fill with just sleeping. It was still common for people to go to sleep at dusk, after a hard day's work. But they would wake up in the middle of the night and do something, chat to the neighbors, have ex in front of the whole family, have a snack, etc. Then you'd go back to bed for your second sleep, waking up with the sun. 
I haven't killed an English man in 5 days. William Wallace. Outlawry doesn't seem to be that popular these days. The concept of killing the wife by burning when the husband dies. Called a sati. It was performed in India in medieval times. More than 38 children. Noblesse oblige, the idea that those with power and privilege had a God-given duty to show generosity and charity towards those with less privilege. Marring minors. Clearly, this comment will be buried, but I think this is interesting enough to throw into the ether. At table, in the Middle Ages, it was considered impolite to scratch your face unless you did it with a piece of bread and then ate it. This was a sanitary concern, because people typically ate in what is now commonly called family style, everyone serving themselves at table from communal dishes. You wash your hands before dinner and if you have to scratch your face, to avoid soiling your hands again, you tear off a hunk of bread, scratch your face with that and eat it. Pursuing a man with six fingers on one hand who killed your father to avenge his death. Do you normally start your conversations like this? In modern times we've criminalized violence, delegitimatized honor, and banned rules against social stratification. All of this exists in medieval times. In the medieval period, you were allowed to kill a man for insulting your honor or for stealing something from you. Depends on the culture. Some places like Iceland had strict laws and mostly dealt with disputes by monetary settlements. Burning people because the church finds them a hem sus. I've never even played that game but I like how sus has entered normal usage. The concepts of paying a bride price or a dowry, they are the exact opposite. Back then you had to pay to get married, now you just pay after you're married. Both are still prevalent in many parts of the world. People just hide it better or call it gifts because it's illegal in most countries. Reading these answers makes me realize how many have zero idea of what happened in medieval times. Seriously. People were often undereducated, but they weren't complete fools. Soldiers raping every single woman in town village they just passed through. Edit, every single one of your replies is about how it is common and happens even now. I'm actually kinda scared to hear that, didn't know it was so serious. Oh believe me that still happens. Even with the militaries of developed countries sometimes. Being able to take a S anywhere. Leeches, bloodletting and general medical hocus pocus. Aren't leeches still used for certain things? When a girl asks you to treat her like a princess so you marry her to a stranger to strengthen the alliance with Poland. Something that is normal today but would be weird in medieval times is washing. I have a very traditional view of marriage if it's not for land, money or political power then it's just not worth it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and leave a comment.